Thanks. Welcome to Burn the Ship. I'm excited about it. I appreciate you uh, making the time for us. It does mean a lot. Anybody that, that sets apart some time while you're in the middle of doing your business uh, is a big thing for us. So I appreciate that. Uh, our goal is to connect entrepreneurs with professionals that can help you go all in on your business. We want to work with and talk to people that have walked the walk and talked the talk and experienced all the things that we experience as small business owners. Uh, and we want to try to bottle up some of those experiences and skills and teach them to that next generation of entrepreneurs. So, uh, again, thanks for coming. I appreciate you uh, making the time. Um, but why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your business? Well, first of all, thank you so much for reaching out. And I am so happy to share this. Um, so let's just begin with this is kind of poignant and yet kind of sad. Not sad's not the word. It's this is very this is very kind of cool. I realized realized something today. I started my business first and foremost a year after I lost my mom to cancer. And my business is Tiramisu Papery. I am stationary in gifts. And Tiramisu means a little pick me up. So when I lost my mom, which is a year ago tomorrow. Now tell me how weird this is that we're talking about this today. Um, So I needed a card that just kind of acknowledged that you are hurting, Lisa. I see what you're going through. I'm here for you. I knew my mom was in a better place. I knew it was going to make me stronger, but it didn't like the people, what people were giving me didn't scratch the surface of what I was feeling. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, you can tell me all day and I can tell you all day, dude, you're going to be stronger. Your mom's in a better place. She's looking after you and you're going to go. I know, I know. But I'm hurting right now. I don't have that, mom, what do I do? I have no, where's that phone call? Where's that voice of telling me, Lisa, you put too much salt in this? Or, honey, you know, you're going to be fine. All moms go, I, I didn't have that. So I started a card line that spoke to that authentic, I get it, I see you, along with the fact that I miss my mom's voice, which was snazzy very sassy, very snarky, very authentic and real and didn't sugarcoat anything for you. So that's kind of where I started because I was in advertising as a designer. I'm like, I can make these. And so I did. And now here we are. It'll be 11 years this month that I've been doing this. Is it 11 years? No, hold on. Yeah. 11 years I've been doing this. And I'm in a thousand stores. I just opened my brick and mortar alongside with my wholesale in 22. So here we are riding a weird, crazy business wave. <laughs> what do you sell? So what has it turned into now? Okay. So I still carry my own stationery. I do greeting cards. I do pencils, notebooks, pads, pencils, let's see, pens, stickers, wrapping paper, gift bags, um, that's what I sell. And then in my store, I carry the exact same thing, my stuff, along with other small makers who are in line with me in being authentic and speaking some truths and calling you out. I mean, like, I don't know if I can say this or not, but it's really calling you out on your bullshit. You know, we have to have that one friend that literally goes, girl or dude get over yourself. You got this, you know, that kind of mentality. And so that's where I start bringing in other people. You guys can't see it, but I'm talking with my hands as I'm pulling in other people. Oh, they can see and, you. Uh, yeah, you can. Um, no, they'll be able to see you whenever they watch it. They'll be able to see you. Okay. And then I also bring in other people that give back and help, whether it's because they lost somebody to cancer or they have a loved one that is fighting recovery, you know, so I try to bring in small makers with my line at my store. Sure. Um, and where are you, where are you located? Well, we're located in Huntsville, Alabama, um, which let me tell you, having these kind of stationary items in Huntsville, it's, it's been tricky um, because a lot of people are like, oh, it says what? And then there's some people are like, oh, my God, finally, because Huntsville is not like any other place in Alabama, if you will. It's like an oasis, right? Like 
because everybody is really from somewhere here. Oh, yeah. Because you've got the military, you've got the space stuff, you've got, you know, the FBI, just so many things. So there's a lot of transplants here. Oh, yeah. So those people are finding me are like, oh, thank God. Where the people that are really here are like clutching the pearls, like it did not just say that on the card. And I'm like, yep, <laughs> it did. Tell so, me this. How, yeah. how did you create those relationships that got you to a thousand stores? Well, I started, okay, so it started with me finding a business coach that really, truly helped you grow a wholesale business. Because wholesale and retail are two different beasts. Oh, yeah. So, it, it, And a lot of people don't realize that how you approach a customer in your store is totally different than a retailer. Because a retailer, buyer we have other things going on. Like we've got to worry about our taxes. We've got to worry about inventory. We've got to worry about, okay, why is there a flood in my back room? Oh, so you want me to look at your stuff? Okay, yeah, just I'll look at it when I get to it. So you really have, I had to find somebody to teach me how to break through that to be seen, right? So I invested in a coach to help me and started going to trade shows. And when I went to trade shows, I did my due diligence. I reached out to stores that I felt like I would be a good fit in, that my line could complement. Um, and I just started creating and making sure that the number one thing was my why was strong. And my why is, yes, my cards look good. They're nice, great quality paper. But if you didn't understand my why, you probably couldn't understand my line, if that makes sense. So I knew I had to have a strong branding why, and it really seemed to resonate with a lot of people. When I would go to these shows, and I would go to Dallas, I go to Atlanta, I went to Toronto, LA, Vegas, the people that I met were like, you know what? I get it because I lost my husband to cancer. I lost my daughter to cancer. My sister has it. I just lost my mom to Alzheimer's. Like it didn't matter, but people could relate to that story because it's like, it's the, it's the why I started and that connected with a lot of people. Yeah, for sure. Building that, that relatability yeah. into your brand is, um, it's so important, but it's also very difficult, right? Because you have to balance kind of your market and you also have to balance why it is that you do what you do. And that's why I ask about where you're located is because we, uh, as a burn the ship family, I've looked east a long time. Like I have, I've talked to so many of these people in these huge markets of, of Atlanta. There's just tons of people walking by your retail space or whatever that may be. And then you're in a completely different world, really. Mm -hmm. And... What I thought was so interesting was that you mostly double you mostly just doubled down on the basics, right? Like you doubled down on the on the core things is like I have to have a strong brand, I have to really understand why I do what I do, and I have to give a product that is unique versus my competition and in any market I can find a way to be successful is such a unique way to look at it. Like it's very interesting to me that if if a market was going to inhibit any business model, it would be yours. But you've still found a way to be successful in what it is that you do in an unorthodox way compared to what most people would do in that market. They, maybe most people would want to move to Atlanta or they would want to find a place in Pont City and they would want to find all these places where they could have big, big retail locations, big foot traffic. You're very, very different than that. Oh, I'm 100%. Well, and you know, I think a part of it too was I lived in Nashville for a very long time and then I got divorced during COVID and my now husband lived here. And when I moved here, I'm like, I mean, I could still do what I was going to do. But then I started looking around. I'm like, wait a minute, there was nothing like that here. And I saw a huge opportunity and you know, it's very funny. I'm like, I love a lot of these little gift shops. Oh, so sorry. I don't know who and what that was. That's okay. Um, um, I just saw a lot of these gift shops around here. And a lot of them carried a lot of the same things, right? And they're beautiful stuff. And I love it. And I love the owners. But I'm like, but I that's not me. Does that make sense? No, it definitely it's, does. It's not me. And if I know it's not me, I know there's other people that, are like, mm, it's not me either, right? 
So I really just honed in. And I mean, like for coming from advertising, if I couldn't tell my why to everybody that came through my store, I knew I couldn't sell anybody else's line. I knew I couldn't sell my line. I knew I couldn't sell, say you created one. I know, you know, I, that's why I curate what I curate. And oh my God, why is my phone still texting? Hmm. <laughs> so sorry. No, it's all right. <laughs> so sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. Um, what you said was very interesting to me though, in the fact that You saw a big opportunity when most people would see a big obstacle. You know what I mean? Yeah. Most people would see right. a very limited market and, and be afraid to do what it is that you do and attack your business the way that you attack it. And I mean, I'm not going to lie. That I'm, I'm still scared. I mean, I'm always <laughs> going to be scared. But I think it's that scare, that fear that's driving me to push it even harder, if that makes sense. I'm one of these people that if you tell me I can't do it, I'm going to look at you and go, okay and yeah. i'm gonna try 10 times harder to do it i've been that way since i was a kid which has gotten me in trouble um, <laughs> which may be probably why i was grounded most of the time as a kid but that's beside the point but i'm one of these if you give me that challenge i'm gonna accept it and i'm gonna put my heels in to make it happen and i felt like here you know when i tell people the kind of stuff i carry you know you you see that look of judgment and i'm like mm, you can't judge yet you can't mm -hmm. judge yet until I tell you why. And once I tell them my why, you could see that barrier coming down going, oh, my God, I get it. You know, even from the judgmental ones, they kind of get it. Like they'll come in my store and people will look and they're really nice and they'll come up to the counter, whisper, you know, if I were you, I would put all your bad words in one section and kind of hide it, you know. And I smile and I'm like, thank you so much. And I truly appreciate it. But basically what you're telling me is you want me to hide my mother. And they look at me. I'm like, let me tell you why I do what I do. And then I explain it. And I said, so you telling me to hide all that stuff is me. You're telling me the reason why I started, the reason I do this, you want me to hide my mom. Yeah. And at that point, I kind of go, oof, I'm so sorry. I'm like, it's okay. You know, but you're valid to your opinion, but you need to understand why I do what I do. Yeah, 100%. And so go ahead. It just changed. You could see it changed their mindset at that point. Yeah, no doubt. And it ch it changes the way that you interact with your customer when you build mm -hmm. that type of relationship and you, you wear that type of trauma openly. You know what I mean? Oh, and you know what? I know a lot of people tell me I don't need to. I'm like, but that's who I am. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for my mother raising me to be the hustler that I am, to be the woman that I am, to have this mouth on me that I do <laughs> you know and that's the thing it's like I have to be authentically me and that's what my brand is me yeah um and I enjoy it I enjoy it a lot I think most people that are watching <laughs> this will too um there will always be the people that don't you know for the both of us I mean I'm the same way it's like you know take me or leave me whatever it is but the reality is like you've come such a long way and you haven't strayed very far from who you are at your core, which is a really, really cool thing, which is really what I wanted to like kind of harp on to the people that are listening is like you don't have to um, give away what makes you you in order to run a business effectively. You know what I mean? Your core value should still be your same core values. And do I worry about the 1%? Yeah, I do. Of course. It hurts. They don't understand me, you know, and I do worry about them. But then if I go back and I look in over a course of a month, how many people are repeat customers, I have to stop and be, wait, yeah, that's one person. But look at this, these people that come in week after week after week or reorder and reorder. I'm grateful. I'm so grateful because they understand what I do. You know, I mean, since opening the storefront, like on a Saturday, the, I pretty much see a lot of the same people every Saturday because they come in. They're like, okay, what new stickers do you have? Or what do you have? You know, like, or they just want to come by and like, I really don't need anything, but I just want to come in and say hi. You know, that, that means a lot. So, I mean, because they tell other people and it just, God, you got to love organic word of mouth. <laughs> That's the best advertising. Sure. 
So it seems like early on in your journey, just the ability to root yourself in your why was kind of your superpower, right? Uh, but if I yeah. asked you, if I asked you that question, like, what was the thing that you did well at the beginning of your business that helped you grow? I say true to that. And I told my mom's story. Mm -hmm. I told it, I told it and I told it over and over again. And I feel like every time I, t I tell it and even today I can tell it authentically and I still cry. Like, I mean, like I said, tomorrow marks another year without her, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's what really keeps me going and that keeps me digging. And I mean, like, I don't want to fail because I don't want to give this up because this is her. This is my way of still holding on dysfunctionally loving mother daughter relationship that it was. Hmm. <laughs> so, that's that's I mean, a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing and a beautiful pers perspective, though. It really is. Um, a lot of people would make would do their best to part ways with it before they even gave it a try to, to keep it alive. You know what I oh, mean? And I see it going to market. There's a lot of time going to market where I go and I sell my mm -hmm. my line um, and you're in a showroom with lots of brands. And it's funny, since I started, there's a lot of people that you would see all the time. And then all of a sudden it just disappears. They're gone because they're like, I just I couldn't anymore. I, I gave up you know, and sometimes it's because they were just doing it because it was a fluke thing and they're trying to make a quick buck or they just like, oh, let's just see what works. You know, they never had their true why. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I feel like the players that are still going in this crazy time that we're in, it's like we're all in. Like we are all in. This is our bloodline. This is our life. And we are holding true to what we do. What was the most difficult thing about about getting where you are? <laughs> I think the <laughs> hardest thing for me to get to where I, to here was support. Um, you know, my ex husband will truly tell you that he's like, I couldn't give you what you needed, and I'm so glad that you now have a husband that can. Having a partner that supports you and understands it. You know, I there's been late nights packing orders and getting things ready, and my now husband will come and dig his heels in and. He'll help me, you know, and having a support system like that is the hardest. You would think it's the easiest, but sometimes it isn't, you know. And like I said, now my ex is like, I'm so glad you found somebody who can support you. He goes, that makes, he goes, I, and I'm like, good, because I know, you, and he'll, we, we joke about it. I'm like, because I knew you wouldn't be packing pencils. <laughs> and he's like, you're right. I'm not, nope. You know, and we, but that's something that's huge. If you have, any kind of life partner, spouse, what have you, having them support you in it, that takes a huge burden off of you because you have somebody when you just can't pull the wagon one more day, they're happy to help pull alongside you. Yeah, 100%. That's um, huge. Yeah, you're very fortunate, really, if you think about yeah. it. Yeah. You know, and the thing, it's very funny. You want to meet my employees? You're looking at it. Yeah. So I've been a one-woman show for, I can remember, you know, I've had people help me in my warehouse. But for the most part, it's been me. I do all my marketing. I do all my marketing research. I do my, you know, ordering. I do my designing. I do my production. You name it, I do it. You know, there isn't something that I don't do. But since I moved here, I was lucky enough to find somebody to kind of help me when I need it. You know, she's my, hey, just call me if you need me kind of girl. And that's been very helpful. But it's very hard to even find that. Somebody that runs it and can handle it like I do. That's, that's I agree. Hard. Oh, yeah, I agree. It couldn't be me. Oh, my God. It There's days that I'm like, I can't. Like, I just can't. And she'll just go, I'm coming in. When I get there, just go. Okay, bye. <laughs> like, and it's nice to have that. A hundred percent. Yeah, it definitely is. Well, when I think when someone starts a brand like yours, just any any retail brand or anything that a little piece of their soul is attached to, it will be. Well, it's a, your baby. Well, a a a brick and mortar in a thousand wholesale locations sounds like you've checked all the boxes. Where do you? Where do you go from here? What are your next goals? I think, I think my next goal is to, um, well, it's very funny you say that. You, one, for a wholesale perspective, 
I need, I want to get into more box stores and those are the bigger stores that like Barnes and Noble, um, something to that nature where you are sending like thousands and thousands of cards on, right? I've had a few of those and having those, I want more of because as hard as it may be, I like the thrill of that. I know I'm weird. I'm completely weird. I really love that. And also with that being said, growing that wholesale to where I can grow more of the retail and take the space that I'm in and make one big store and put all my warehouse in another location and let somebody else completely manage all of it. That's the big goal down the road. Step away from the warehouse side. Yeah. Oh my God. That's a whole nother beast. If they're two different beasts. Yeah. That's the best way I can say it. It's totally apples and oranges. Best way to put it out there. It's weird that um, another thing, not weird, but it's just unique as well, that most people find their one lane and they, like, abandon the other one quickly. Like, yeah. do you know how um, many people I know that have gotten into that direct-to-consumer? I'm going to build a website. Like, I'm, I have my first 500 customers, one wholesale deal, and, like, retail and managing online orders com goes completely out of the window sometimes it's vice versa like some people know about market they know about how the wholesale relationships work yeah. and they know how to get in retail locations but they're like wow i started selling directly to consumers and i'll never sell to another retail location in my fucking life so well and i think it's okay this sounds very funny like growing up hear me out i'm significantly older than you <laughs> ADHD was not a thing back then like it was or like it is now to have the medication and the tools and everything else. I coped and I coped growing up doing multiple things. It's what helps me focus. It helps me like I was a person that like went from dance to softball to soccer to voice lessons to cheerleading. Like I always had that dot 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 going and I did them all well and that helps me focus. So I feel like that's one of the things for me is having the two help me focus, helps me balance. Because it, here's the thing, what I'm doing in my retail, when I'm seeing and seeing the buying trends, it also helps me create something new where I'm like, you know what? There is a hole. Like, I can't find what I'm looking for for my store, so I'm going to create that, you know? So that's what I love about what I do and mm -hmm. doing both. Yeah, it's also very creative. I think that's another unique thing about it, too, is like the, it was years and years and years in my industry of the credit card processing world before anything creative met anything business for me. And right. then, like, we started turning a camera on and talking in front of it, and that that was a little bit of creativity meshing with the business side for me. But, like, it was very – I mean, it was 0% creative for years and years and years before COVID kind of commanded it of me. Your business isn't necessarily like that, which I think I would get some weird fulfillment out of as well. <laughs> How Truthfully. would you get weird fulfillment? <laughs> well, I just don't, I don't, um, I don't get to go through that same process as you. I don't get to go through that. Oh, I see the hole. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. the hole in my industry, somebody's filled it. Like you just have to go and find the thing and what, write right. whatever agreement that it is for you to be able to sell it and, and solve problems for businesses. And then on the video side of things, it was like you could identify problems that were very consistent among other people. Like, oh, I know what works for lawyers or I know what works for dog yes. grooming places. Mm -hmm. You you being in the consumer space, like every, like I'm so B2B that like it's all data driven. It's like you analyze 100 yeah. of the same thing and you see what's consistent and see what the, the bottom percentage is not doing and the top percentage is doing very well. Consumers are so different. Even though you mm -hmm. get a lot of the data, consumers are so different. Like, I don't have that opportunity Simple. to find that hole and be like, oh, I want to create the solution. You get to do yeah. that, which is pretty cool. Consumers are fickle, though. They really are. Mm. You know, but you got to think primarily my target audience is women. The people that buy are women. And as a woman, we are fickle. <laughs> yeah. We know what we like and we know what we don't like, you know. So there's a big plus for me knowing my market, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, it's so funny that you talk about the car processing. Fun fact, when I first moved to Nashville in 97, I was an in-house designer for a credit card processing company. Yeah. We haven't spent a lot of our marketing budget on in-house design. That is for sure. No, it's, I mean, again, it's changed. It's, it's definitely changed. changed. 
Yeah, it's definitely changed. My industry in the early 2000s, the quota for salespeople was to do one deal every day. And now in my industry, you need to do one deal every week. Really? The reason is because if I walked in, if I knocked on your door and I came in there and we had a great conversation, we just met each other for the first time. And I said, let me see your statement. Where would you go? Because it used to be like underneath your counter or like in your filing cabinet got to you in the mail. Now it's not. Uh Uh-uh. I have to go online, go to my bank, download this, go do that, do all the things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's very funny when, (laughs) you know, when you own a business, you get so many solicited calls. You just do. And the one that I feel like everybody, we all laugh about, isn't about car warranties. It's like, hey, how can we fund you today? Just send me your three last month statements. And everybody's like, click. I'm like, right now. Yeah. And again, you still have to go stop. It's not like you said. Here, take them. It's, oh, please. Mm-hmm. And then you got to find a profit and loss. Then you got to do this. Then you got to do that. You know, it's, again, it's back end stuff. Yeah, it definitely is. And so that, just that, not being able to collect statements from everybody that you walk in and see has slowed down the industry so much. It went from a one or two touch close to a seven or eight or nine touch close. And it changed my industry forever. But then know. stuff like Square came around and everybody got used to paying three three and a half percent and it added a bunch of margin to my industry so like oh i hate paying it though i hate paying it (laughs) everybody does that's why we that's why our business is successful because we 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 save people a ton of money versus what everybody's used to we're like hey if you find someone and not something to do your credit card processing i guarantee you it will be cheaper i've said that to so many if you find a person instead of a thing to do your credit card processing it will yeah. undoubtedly be cheaper. Anything that you can pull off the shelf and take payments in 15 minutes is going to be expensive. So they did us a little bit of a favor, but they also made it harder to go acquire business because everybody knows that they have to drill every retail location in your town 20 times a day to get a statement. Like, we just don't do this. We don't do things that way. I remember back in the days when we had the credit card. Knuckle, the the knuckle buster. I loved it. I loved that, that feeling, that, that push-pull, you know. God, I am so dating myself. Anyway. (laughs) I know it, though. I know the science behind it. You're not as old as you think, I think. Or maybe you think I'm younger than I am. Um, Yeah, that's what it is. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Well, tell me this. The the way that we always kind of end the podcast, tell people how to find you. If they want to buy something from you, whether it's online or face-to-face, where do they find you? Okay, you can first find me online at tiramisupaperree.com. Um, and our site, we have everything listed out, like gifts for notebook hoarders, gifts for the stationary lovers, gifts for the T-Swift fans. Oh, my God, that was a great selling point this week, this summer. I'm not kidding you. Not summer. What holiday did we just come from? This is how mm-hmm. tired I am. <laughs> Christmas. Um, and then you can find us here in Huntsville, Alabama, in the Jones Valley area. And that is 2000 Cecil Ashburn, Suite 108, Huntsville, Alabama. And, I mean, like, I just, you know, if you want to follow me on Instagram, Tiramisu Papery. I mean, that's where I hang out the most social media-wise. Sure. And what does it feel like to burn the ship? What does it feel like to go all in on your business, right? Like, I'm, I'm sure that people that have listened to the podcast relate to your story and they relate to <laughs> – your skills, right? And and everyone has this desire to pour a little bit of themselves in their business, right? And attach a little piece of their soul to it. But a lot of people are terrified at the aspect of jumping all in on their business. So what does it feel like to burn the ship and go all in on your business? And why should people that are kind of kicking that rock down the road seek out that same experience? Okay. Um, first of all, to go all in, no matter what, it's very scary and it is terrifying. But I rather have that feeling than living with regret knowing I never did it and letting it haunt me that I didn't go all in. Because I feel like when you go all in, you may be scared. You may think, what am I doing? Am I crazy? But the reward of whether or not it succeeds, which it will because you went all in and it's all you and you're all your heart, no matter how big or how small, it's going to be more rewarding than knowing that you never did it. And I highly, highly suggest that you've got to go all in. You can't half-ass it. 
you've got to be totally both feet. Let's jump, hold the nose and go in versus just tipping, tipping your toes. Cause if you tip that toe, you're never going to, you're never going to see the reward. You're never going to see the profits. You're never going to see that change that you're going to make for yourself and others. Yeah. A hundred percent. You got to do it. You got to do it. I mean, like there's I no substitute. It, no. And I told a girlfriend of mine, she's like, I can't believe you did. I said, girl, I jumped and I just built my wings on the way down. I'm like, I figured it out. And is it for everybody? No. Some people like to have their wings built before they jump, but I'm just one of those. I'm like, screw it. I'll figure it out, but I'm going all in. Yeah. And I'm about to go all in again here soon because I feel like that is, you go through seasons, you go through lots of seasons and I'm at a turning point. Like, you know, you come to a nut, like when you go in business, you understand you come to a crossroads, right? Which one do I take? Do I just go all in or do I kind of, uh, I'm okay staying where I am. And in order for me to grow, I got to go all in again. So each time I want to level up, you got to go in all in again and all in again. So well, I'm excited just, for you. Yeah, I'm you. excited for you. I love the way that you represent your business. I love the way that you speak <laughs> and your, your energy is, is hard to find in the business world. Truthfully, I can't oh, even emulate it. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh no, I'm trust me. And and today may be one of those days for me starting at three o'clock. You know, no, you never know. You never know the the ebbs and flows of the day and what you go through. But like, it seems like you radiate just a, a an extraordinary amount of of personality in your business, which makes it uh <laughs> makes it refreshing for me. Business is redundant a lot of times. There's in my market, it's like. You know, I can drive past 20 chiropractors on the way home. You know what I mean? Your business is so unique and it's so you and it radiates that energy in such a unique way that um, I appreciate it. I, I've, I've grown some appreciation for it and I look forward to seeing it grow even more. And if there's anything that we can do to help you, um, please I, let me know. Absolutely. But I just want to say thank you so much. And I really, truly appreciate you asking me to do this. Yeah. Anytime. Yeah. All right. Burn the ship. <laughs>